Teams are defined by their superstars, but most of the time, the success of a team centers around the players and units that fly under the radar. Whether it's the starting safety, who leads the team in tackles and contributes heavily on special teams, the left tackle, who just over a year ago was walking onto the team, or the guys up front on the D-line that are a main foundation in the nationally recognized defense, at the end of the day, they all help the team win. Entering the season, everyone knew about Max Bulla, Darquez Denard, and many more guys that make up the Spartan defense. But one name people didn't know a lot about was safety Curtis Drummond. But it didn't take long for him to make his impression. Darquez Denard, here he comes off the corner. Pass is caught! Are you kidding? What an interception! Curtis Drummond! As a safety, Curtis plays an important role on the defense. The field safety uh, has to be an athletic guy. Um, he's a guy that's similar to our corner positions in that he has to be able to run and cover as well as make tackles and those things like that. Uh, and we have a really good guy in Curtis Drummond doing it right now. And uh, he's athletic, he can run, he can cover, he makes calls back there, and he can tackle. So uh, we recruit to that position looking for those type of qualities. Main thing is just a lot of responsibility. Uh, you got a lot of pressure to, to get people in the right uh, positions and make sure people get the, the right play call. So I, I would say you're, you're kind of like the next field general behind the, the Mike linebacker. He, he's good at um, making smart decisions and stuff like that. And um, knowing he's up over top of me and stuff like that, uh, I know I don't got a lot to worry about. And um, he's usually going to give me the right call. And uh, I know he's um, good back there to watch my back. Um, playing free safety, you know, he has more the receivers have more room to uh, run their route uh, than at the boundary safety of uh, my side. Um, so you gotta have speed. Uh, you gotta have speed out there. Um, you gotta, you know, you gotta cover guys up. You know, you gotta lock them down. Uh, and that's what he does, man. He does a perfect job. What he, uh, perfect job of doing his job, uh, keeping guys in front of him. You know, making plays on the ball, and getting those interceptions that we need. Play fake by Armstrong. Throws it outside. It's picked off. Falling down pick for Curtis Drummond. Yeah, it's good to see him improve from the years. Um, just seeing him from when we first got here, you know, from last year to this year, you know, he's stepped up a lot, tremendously. And um, he's making way more plays than he was before, you know. Um, and everybody's noticing him. And uh, he's definitely one of the best DBs in the country. Um, I feel like our whole secondary is one of the best secondaries in the country. Um, you know, he's just one of those guys, you know, he always has his motor running. And, you know, he's going to make plays for you. I mean, that's what you want in your defense. Over the season, Curtis has emerged as a playmaker, not only on the defensive side of the ball, but also on special teams. Well, and, and that's great to see because that's something that um, I have stressed in, my, in, in the defensive back room uh, and talking to them because a lot of those guys have aspirations to play in the National Football League. And to do that, uh, especially defensive backs, you have to play on, the, uh, on defense as well as special teams. It's only a 53-man roster, 47 dress on game day, and I stress those numbers to them, letting them know, hey, if you make an NFL team, even if you're the starter, you're going to be required to play special teams at some point in time. So uh, he's a guy that's taking heed to that and is playing well for us, not only on special teams, but uh, not only on defense, but as well on special teams. I mean, our coaches harp all the time how a uh, special team is a, is a big part of the game. Uh, specifically punt. Uh, they talk about how punt is the most important play of the game. Uh, so we, we just try to get our best players on the field, uh, best 11, whether it's offense or defense. So uh, if, when I'm on the field, uh, I, just, I just try to give all my effort. Uh, I just try to do whatever I can to help out the team. Uh, we have a great punter in Mike Siler who, who places the ball where he needs to be. So he, he has a lot of confidence in us to make a play. And so I'm, I'm just trying to give effort down the field uh, regardless of, of what it's on. As the end of the season nears, the torch will be passed on to Curtis and he will have to step up even more and lead the defense in the future. I mean, I, I think my confidence level has, has grown each year uh, since I've gotten here. I mean, I've learned a lot. Uh, Max Bulla is, is one of the smartest players I've ever even seen. Uh, just seeing the way he prepares for the game and, and handles himself and carries himself, uh, just seeing how Darquez just, just uh, approaches the game and, and his attitude about the game. Uh, 
I've been able to take take a lot from both of them. Uh, just seeing the way Isaiah Lewis uh, is, is just a hard player, uh, hard-nosed, tough guy, uh, plays through anything. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been able to take a lot from, from a lot of different players. So, I mean, next year, if that's what the team needs for me to do is, is, is to take control of the defense, and that, that's something that I'll do. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it is to help the team, and, and if that's what it is, then so be it. It's not that often that a kid goes from preferred walk-on to starting left tackle as a redshirt freshman. But that's what happened with Jack Conklin. As his high school career ended, Jack didn't have an offer to play college football, but that didn't stop him from pursuing his dream to do so. I mean, it's rough uh, when you're going into the senior year not knowing what's going to happen, with, you know, knowing that you got to do really well this season, you know, just to even get a chance for someone to see you, and that no one's looking at you, and you, you know, even after you finish the season and no one's looking at you, you just, it's, it's a really, it was a really rough time. Well, Jack's story is, you know, we knew about him. He was a, a later developing player. We looked at him early on, but then our numbers were not there to take any more offensive linemen. And his dad's a, a very good head high school football coach here in the state of Michigan. And we talked one time in January about exactly what Jack should do. And I suggested perhaps that he go to a prep school and they did some work research. They went out and, and they were getting ready to enroll him in a prep school for, for the last year, for the 2012 season. And Coach D'Antonio started talking about our offensive line, things we needed, et cetera, talking about needing that big body offensive tackle. And we, uh, we re-put his film on. And at that point in time, Coach D'Antonio said, hey, let's try to get him here uh, as a preferred walk-on. And then everything works out right, put him on scholarship in January, and that's what we did. Well, I definitely had a chip on my shoulder because I, you know, every day I would look at those other guys out there who had scholarships and just think that, you know, I, I want to be one of those guys and I want to earn it. So that every day, you know, coming out and scouting, coming out of practice, I knew what I had to do and I had to work hard to be able to, to earn that status and be, be able to earn a scholarship. Once on the scene at Michigan State, Jack didn't waste any time getting noticed and making a push for playing time on the offensive line. Yeah, we saw a lot of good things out of Jack John. He, he continued to um, build his, I guess you'd call it his football resume, things he was able to do. Will Golston would grab me as we'd go in and say, hey, that, that right tackle, or hey, that left tackle is really, you know, whatever side he was playing that week. And the biggest thing I think with Jack John is the strides he made once the season was over. Because if I had to put the bowl practices on not too long ago, to, try to find a couple plays to tweak some things. And, you know, I'm watching him on scout team, and it wasn't as if, you know, it was like, whoa, here he is. Now, you could tell he had skills. You could tell he was athletic. You could tell he had he was strong, things of that nature in the way he played. But, it, but he has transformed himself through winter workouts, through the spring, through the fall camp he had, and, into being a, a, a terrific redshirt freshman. Well, I guess going into the spring, I. Oh, I knew I had a chance to maybe, you know, earn a little bit of playing time and stuff, but then I, you know, I started I, working really hard with a bunch of other guys, you know, working with defensive guys like Shalee Calhoun and Marcus Rush. And they really helped me uh, with my technique and learning what it's like, you know, to be in a game day situation and stuff. And that, that really helped me um, go into the spring, have a really good spring, and then, even, and then come to summer, summer camp knowing that I have a chance to earn a starting spot. And this season, Jack earned a spot as a starter on the offensive line. And now, as the starting left tackle, he is responsible for protecting the quarterback's blind side. Yeah, the left tackle position, as you know, is, is a tremendous position to play when you have a right-handed quarterback, as we do. So it's really important that he continues to learn from things. Um, you know, this whole year I've been, you know, very fortunate with not getting hit so much and not, you know, or the offensive line not giving up a lot of sacks. Um, but, you know, with him being my blind side, um, having my back every single game, um, you know, keeping me protected against, you know, some of the best pass rushers in the nation, um, best pass rushers in the Big Ten. Um, you know, I can't thank him and, you know, show him my appreciation uh, anymore. Uh, Conklin is definitely a special player. Uh, you know, like you said, uh, you know, a guy who didn't have a scholarship, you know, coming in. And uh, you can just see the way he goes about his work. Uh, he's, he, you know, he's, he's a raw talent, you know, definitely a physical guy, you know, big guy. You know, you can just see that, you know, you see him knocking guys down on the field. And he's just been doing a great job. You can just see that in the film with uh, you know, him asking, asking questions, you know, taking notes, 
you know, Casey Hunt asked us older guys. So it's just he's just been doing a great job and taking advantage of resources, uh, you know, uh, you know, being critical of himself on film. Well, I think, you know, with him, you know, being our left tackle as a retro freshman, that definitely comes with a lot of pressure, but I think he's doing an amazing job, an amazing job, and uh, we're truly thankful for that. You go out there after practice, and you'll see him out there with Treddy, you'll see him out there with Foe, you'll see him out there with the older guys, uh, just working on different things to help not only him, but those guys, when they can teach it, they then become better. Being a red shirt freshman and contributing in the way that Jack is, it makes for a promising future. I just try to look, you know, look at all the things that are still ahead of me. I mean, the starting spot's just, that's the first step I wanted to accomplish. There's so many more things that I want to be able to accomplish just to, I don't want to be content and say, oh, I'm just, to, I mean, I made it to what I wanted to be. I want to be a starting left tackle. I want to go farther than that. I want to, I want to be uh, someone that, when I think Michigan State, I want to be a name that they think of. Being a defensive lineman, you have to have the right mentality. And at Michigan State, that mentality is AWOL. We have a motto, it's called AWOL, Animal Without Leash, and that's what we try to be. You know, we try to be reckless, but we try to keep it controlled, though. You know, reckless abandonment, but just make it, make it controlled and uh, wreak havoc on the offensive line and in the backfield. Well, it, it is a controlled rage. It's understanding what's going on, but have a relentless way of handling yourself regardless of the situation. AWOL has no boundaries, but it does in a sense that people think that you are, but your ability to, to uh, execute a defense in a fast, um, uninhibited manner, uh, I think is one of the key things of what AWOL is all about. And feel like mentally that you can get into the head of an, an offensive man, and that AWOL mentality will put you in a position to make more plays, and our guys are, uh, you know, kind of taking attachment to that, and uh, I like it myself. Uh, we're still smart up front, but it takes an a one mentality to get it done. This season, the defensive line has been a very solid unit, and a big reason why the defense ranks amongst the best. And one of the best parts about their production has been the fact that it's come as a cohesive unit. Yeah, I mean, we, we all really work off of each other, whether it be the defensive ends, you know, working with the tackles, running stunts, whether it be, you know, people just playing their gaps. Uh, the one thing that we've always wanted to do is just uh, try to work as a unit and be cohesive as we can and, you know, just continue each week to, to get better and learn off of each other what, our, what each other's tendencies are and to, you know, take a lot of pride in the fact that, you know, teams can't run on, on us. And, uh, you know, teams are starting to respect the fact that, you know, we're a run-stopping team at the same time. We're able to get in the backfield and get sacks, and you know, we, we take a lot of pride in the fact that every, the game starts up front and what happens when the game starts up front. Yeah, I, you know, that's been a big key for to our success. Also, you know, having the guys that can come in, you know, as backups and, and play just as you know, just as fast or just as strong as the first team guys. I mean, we got a lot of young guys who are trying to step into those roles as, as a leader, and you know, so, thus far, you know, this year. Guys have been stepping up, you know, being being very positive, you know, and uh, playing their own roles, you know. Yeah, I think uh, that's 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 another big thing. Uh, it's so it's so so competitive on our D line, you know. Everybody wants to make plays. Everybody wants to do do, do a good job, you know. But uh, I think everybody's happy for everybody. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all about the D line, and you know, because we we set the tone. I mean, honestly, I think we just have to keep the same mentality that we came into this season with, and I don't see anybody. You know, I don't see any egos flaring up. I don't see any, you know, people pulling up and saying, oh, well, you know, we're in a good place now. The way that we see it, we haven't accomplished anything yet. And um, we still have that same chip on our shoulder that we had at the beginning of the season coming in. And that's not something that's going to change until, you know, we've gotten what we wanted. Hello, everybody, from Ryan Field in Evanston, Illinois. And Michigan State could wrap up the Legends Division title today with a win over the Wildcats of Northwestern. This is a dangerous team though, Jason. Uh, clearly, uh, they are much better than their four and six record and 0 and six mark in the Big Ten. But they're playing a team today that has its sights set on the Big Ten championship game in two weeks in Indianapolis. Spartans won the toss, they deferred. Northwestern will receive, they'll play into the wind. Matthew Harris and Jarrell Williams 
are deep, and the kick by Kevin Muma with the wind in his back sails into the end zone. Second and goal, Northwestern just outside the five. Simeon takes the snap, play fakes, winds up and throws right side, and he is nearly picked off in the end zone. Nearly taken away from Christian Jones. Big play here now. Third and goal, Northwestern at the Spartan five. Simeon takes the snap, quick throws left side. It is incomplete. Not the right guy to go left. Spartans take over at their 20-yard line, down three nothing in the early going in the second quarter at Northwestern. Connor Cook takes the pistol snap, hands to Jeremy Langford, running to his right, runs through one, two, three Wildcats. Third down now and five, ball at the Northwestern 20. Connor Cook with an offset eye to the right, Pendleton in front of Langford behind him. R.J. Shelton in motion left to right, hand off to Jeremy, running back to his left, the 15, he's at the 10. Jeremy's at the five, Jeremy's heading for the left pylon, into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Heck of a block by Fofanoti. Connor Cook has Jeremy Langford to his right, takes the snap, lofts it over the middle, it is... Look at that. Caught by Benny Fowler, Benny Fowler. At the 50, Benny Fowler sprint down the left sidelines. Inside the 30, inside the 20, he's inside the 10. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. That's an 87-yard strike. Wow. Our halftime score reached the Spartans 14 and Northwestern 6. At Northwestern, Michigan State leads 14 to 6. Two wide outs, two tight ends. Jamal Lyles in the ball game, tight on the right. Connor takes the snap, tosses it deep middle to Tony Lippett. Lippett with a grab inside the 40. 37 yard field goal try from the right hash mark for Geiger. The snap and the put down. The kick end over end and good. Trumpy to the left of Simeon. Here's the shotgun snap. Simeon flushed from the pocket, runs to his left. Now he's in trouble. Amrahan in motion. Right to left, Simeon with an option oh. toss, and Trumpy picks up the pigskin, but has he ever drilled on a block tackle by Trey Waynes for a loss? Jeremy Lanker to his left in the shotgun. Nice play fake to Jeremy. Connor Cook now rolls to his right, throws to Jeremy, makes the grab at the 50. Jeremy on his feet inside the 40. One step back, of course, it's Jeremy Langford. Now Dennis motions to the right of Langford. Connor Cook back to throw. Throws left sideline. Nice grab made. Falling out of bounds at the 15-yard line by Keith Mumphrey. With Price tight on the right and Gleichert on the wing on the right. Take the reverse, and here's Connor Cook throwing over the middle. It is caught by Josiah Price. Touchdown, MSU. Here he is in the shotgun, play fakes to Green. Winds up and throws left sideline. It is going to be intercepted. A falling down pick for guess who? Darquez <laughs> Denard. Northwestern's football at their 36. Simeon play fakes up the middle and throws left side, and it's picked off by Curtis Drummond. Falling down grab. Reached over on Christian Jones at the 40-yard line. Connor Cook hands to Jeremy Langford off right guard. Look out, he's at the 20, he's at the 15, he's at the 10, he's at the 5, he's into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. A 37-yard run for a score for Jeremy Langford. And the Spartans go up big over the Wildcats at Northwestern. Second and six for Northwestern. Hand off to Green, and he is snowed under. Hit first by Max Bulla. Snap to Simeon. Hit as he throws, and the ball is picked off by Curtis Drummond. He's at the 30, angles to his right at the 25, oh, he he's at go. the 20, at the 15, he's inside the 10, and block tackled out of bounds at about the five yard line on the far right sideline by Dan Vitale. And Michigan State can celebrate now. A Legends Division title for the second time in three years. Hey, congratulations. Good luck next week. Good championship, okay? Good luck to you. All right, happy holidays. Be safe going home. Hey, good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Great career. Thank you. That's the end of the game.
down. That's just goal number one. That's just number one. That's the second nail. That's the second nail. Everybody got a hat on. Make sure we got a hat on tonight. Okay? Hey, Keep hey, that hat on. Hey. Feel great. Uh, tremendous accomplishment by our, by our football team. Uh, first goal's down. That's what we want to do, be able to get back to that championship game. If you do that, you got to win the Legends. But I uh, you know, also feel like work isn't done. We've been this far before. We need to go farther than we've been. It's a great feeling. Uh, just all the, all the things we set uh, before the season, and just not going out there and doing it every game, just going out there and play play for every every game, and just knowing what we had to do. And we right now did it, and it's just a great feeling right now. I thought it was just a uh, defense pitcher to shut out the second half, so just a team win, and uh, very excited about it. But uh, you know, there's there's other things to go. You know, we still want to play well against Minnesota, to finish the season and complete our circles, but uh, uh, you know, this one feels good and we'll take uh, next week and get ready again.